our fault. Okay. Continue, continue. <laughs> All right. But you could hear me, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> good, good. So I said it wasn't recorded or something, so yeah. Um, so yeah, so, so that's what I did. Like uh, I, had, I was very proud of what I did because I, I took painstakingly, you know, painted every oval circle, whatever. And then when I got back the thing from my teacher, she gave me a D. <laughs> She's, but I, I was like, well, you told us to do what we like and, you know, choose the color we like, uh, do the pattern we like. I like all concrete ovals and fully filled, whatever. But her idea of, you know, like it has to be random, it has to be very colorful and all over the place, which is fine, you know. But I think um, if you're in the education field, uh, you know, please be kind to your kids. <laughs> <laughs> Especially their first foray to art or math or science, whatever. You know, don't, don't hurt their, like, confidence by saying that is a wrong design or that is, okay, math, one plus one equals to two. Actually, that could be argued as well, but you know, some, some things are more uh, black and white, but I think art design, um, visual interpretation is a bit more um, different shades of grays and colors. So, so I think that's one thing to kind of keep in mind um, if you have, even, even if you're not in the education, just, just, just your kids or people you're helping, uh, don't tell them this is wrong or right, but uh, give them examples of what it could be different, you know, and, and, um, and you know, en encourage they, them to maybe say why they liked what they did, which will help them see different differences and different viewpoints. So that's my story. Oh, no, I'm already going too long about this story. But um, so, so like, um, that's, that's not necessarily, uh, uh, that, that was in Singapore grade one, but that's, that's not necessarily East versus West or anything, but I think there's a trend um, if you see that more like um, simple, uh, subtle design versus strong, um, what do you call, um, more bold uh, colors and, and patterns. So even though from the potato incident, you know, <laughs> I, I think I like, uh, I, I thought I like simple designs, but I, I compare just my Instagram with one of my good friends from Finland. And uh, one thing is like simple doesn't mean that it's simple can be also, you know, there's various degrees. So I like simple, but maybe more bold colors, even though I like this kind of a style. But when I take a picture or when I put a filter on, that's my eyes kind of veer towards that more. So I think uh, a lot of times when you compare like uh, different uh, backgrounds, you do tend to notice a trend or a pattern. They may, of course, you know, n nobody's exactly the same, and, but um, there's just differences that we, we can consider if we're designing for different audiences. So, um, so in China, a lot of websites, uh, even though I haven't actually lived in China and I've been a away from Asia for, for a while, I do notice when I visit like Sina.com, uh, this is one of their uh, Popular websites is like a combination of Facebook, Twitter, and of course news and whatnot, shopping and things like that. So it's uh, a lot of text, a bunch of categories on top, bright colors. Of course, it's New Year's coming, but still it's like bold and um, the kind of visual impact they are looking for. Whereas Sina's own website in English looks quite different, you know, uh, kind of more uh, mute uh, colors and uh, even the thing about uh, spring, um, because Chinese New Year is a uh, spring festival, it's like more subdued and less categories, just a few headlines and things like that. So even uh, Chinese website know um, to, uh, they have different audiences whether they're, they're come going for the English website or the main Chinese website. So again, this is just two um, kind of cultures. Uh, of course, there's many different, uh, within Europe, we have so many different uh, variations and North and South America. So, you know, um, there's no time to go into details for everything, but just something that you can keep in mind, even for one website, if you have like two main groups of target or, or three, whatever, you, you define your target audience and you can design accordingly. Um, not just website, apps, of course, is, um, and so on. So there's something, or you can just copy with pride. <laughs> Simple works for both Chinese and English. 
So um, I think what, what to kind of gather from that is there's no one design that works for everyone, but um, as, as, and uh, a lot of times what we think is good design may not be visually appealing or intuitive, for example, um, to some other people. So design with your interest, but also design with your audience in mind. So that's more of um, maybe kind of interpretation of what's good or interesting design. Let's go to uh, more like layouts. So um, I, when I was really young, like before five or six, um, I actually read books with Chinese that went from right to left, top to down. And then when I moved to Singapore, and um, uh, Singapore is sli slightly more um, advanced, well, not really, but they just had more books that is like left to right, uh, like, like English, even in Chinese. So, so when I first started reading those books, I thought this felt wrong. Of course, it's not wrong, but it's because I grew up reading books that went from right to left, top to down for, for a few years. Um, so it's what um, people are used to, and that's something to keep in mind. Of course, nowadays, most Chinese, Japanese, and Korean websites are left to right, but um, there's still like Arabic, Hebrew, and some languages that are right to left, and uh, if you have websites that get translated to, or apps that get translated to these, um, these languages, that's something you have to keep in mind. And then, like e even nowadays, you can see, uh, oh, this is not very, I should have zoomed in more, but um, Hainan Airlines, uh, um, it's just the left and the right side of the, the plane, but they actually have the, so this, this is Hainan, Hong Kong, Hainan Airlines, but this is Kong Hang Nang Hai. They actually rolled it from right to left. So, so it's, it's, I think to, to an Asian's mind, it's, more from front to back rather than right to left, because that's the front of the plane and goes front to left, and the same on the other side. So when I first saw it, it, it didn't register to me that that's weird, because I can read both ways. But <laughs> <laughs> yay, I can read both ways. <laughs> but, um, but you know, like if you didn't understand that, and if you just read, read the characters, you'd be like, why is this like the wrong way? So, so it's just something, um, again, like uh, localization. And uh, when I was look, looking for these pictures and stuff, I also noticed there was this thing about horizontal scrolling web pages. Uh, I don't think it ever caught on, but there was a period of time where, like, you know, ooh, horizontal scrolling, something different, something cool. But when you search nowadays, most of the web pages now are back to normal vertical scrolling. And um, there are some that maybe exist, but they're mainly graphics intensive and not text. Because if you think about it, most text nowadays is left to right, so you need a stopping point to kind of come back. So horizontal scrolling makes more sense. Whereas if I really did have a website that was just full of Chinese characters going this way, it might make sense for horizontal scrolling because they need some stopping point from the bottom and then go back up again, and then you can scroll this. But, but the horizontal scrolling won't be left to right, but right to left. So <laughs> just to confuse you a little bit more. <laughs> but you, you can see that uh, more and more the Vertical uh, version don't make sense because you have actually have to put like Eng English or other characters the wrong way around. So, so now I'm bring you back again to my childhood because I, I like to you know reminisce about that and to show you how geeky I looked. But oh, I, I know I'm still looking geeky now, but don't 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 say that. <laughs> so um, when I was a stu student a um, long time ago, I think I was good, a good student. I like to think that, um, but um, a lot of times, hang on. <laughs> I did one talk once when I totally forgot to drink for half an hour, and I was like, after that, it was so dry. But anyway, so um, oh yeah, where was that? Yeah. So so, but what we did a lot of at, within me and my classmates is we copied each other's homework a lot. Now, um, you know, it's, it's not that we don't know how to do it. It's just that um, at least at that time, it's very like uh, results, grade and academic focus for, for most subjects, especially for like math, science and things like that. So, um, and homework take up a big percentage of the grade. So, of course, during the exams, you, you don't copy each other, but for, you know, we want to ha at least establish a certain grade for our um, class, for our homework. So. 
you know, somebody is better at uh, physics, so we'll, you know, they'll, they'll do the homework and we'll copy off that person. I'm a little bit better at math, so you know, I'll do the homework and somebody will copy off. You know, it's, it's shared, um, <laughs> shared effort, right? <laughs> Op open homework source. <laughs> so um, it's just it's to establish that um, certain cultures, when when they think of copying and sharing stuff, they may not have a the, the bad intention in mind is not to steal somebody's work, but rather to share knowledge. And actually, a lot of times we copy from the people we respect most in certain subjects. So that's what happened. I guess people respect me for my math knowledge, and I respect somebody else for their uh, biology knowledge. So, and well, you can see like mostly guys in my engineering college class. So that's that's anyway. So. Um, like I said, I've been away from Asia for a while, but even nowadays, I can I see uh, like Naomi Wu. She's a pretty prolific, um, prolific. Um, <laughs> I got the words mixed up. Prolific uh, maker in China, and even she's saying like in the current environment because I wasn't uh, sure of how. I don't want to say things that maybe not necessarily true right now, but even now, like um, original ideas in China. Again, not everyone thinks that way, but there are enough people who think that way that originality may not be valued as much as just maybe copying something and making it better kind of thing. So, and another topic is, you know, even like, it's one thing if, if you are there in China, it's another thing if you're a woman in China. Of course, we can have a whole separate topic on that. I know I only have two minutes left. Um, but, um, and it's also different if you are, non-Chinese and non-female uh, living in that country because I know a lot of people who say, I've lived there for five, ten years. It's not really like that. But the thing is, if you're not local and maybe female, you, you might experience different things. So just something to keep in mind that sometimes why they are not necessarily creative is not because they don't want to be or they are not, but there might be other cultural influences at, uh, at play. So. Well, I used to work for Nokia, so I show some Nokia phones. But um, you know, this this thing is is probably like they, they call it KRR, uh, keep it real fake in Engadget. So a lot of copies of you know uh, phone designs. Again, I'm not defending um, things like that because I, I I also agree that it's wrong. But kind of understand why some of this might happen in um, from what you see. So. And this is not just uh, in China or in Asia, because um, I was traveling in Germany and I saw this uh, lovely sculpture. And for me, I recognized it as the uh, sculpture in Finland by Ela Hiltunen. I think that's the name. And um, the, I tried to look for more information, whether around the sculpture or online, but I couldn't find any information on the one in Germany. And then later on, somebody, when I was tweeting about it, somebody also told me there was a similar sculpture in Canada. Later, after even more Googling, I found a few uh, sources of that sculpture. And then it turns out that uh, the Finnish version says, oh, it's a plagiarized sculpture. And then uh, you know, the, 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 the original sculptor is demanding, demanding the sculpture to be removed and so the compensation and so on. The German source says, no, it's not plagiarism. And uh, well, then they mentioned that the artist died 10 years ago. Then the Swedish source is more method of, uh, of fact. There's a copy of the Sibelius monument in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so it doesn't tell me much. But, but anyway, I, I think that um, if there's a way to easily credit the original author or uh, creator, you know, like, if, if my work is sh shared by other people, I, I will be proud of it. Of course, there's the oh, whole um, business side or mo monetary sort of things to consider, but you know, like um, j just thinking, like sometimes is, is copying necessary the evil thing? Uh, and uh, if you do that, what's the best way to, you know, maybe you're just inspired by the work because the, the sculptures do look somewhat different. So how do you then uh, show attribution and show credit? So, and it's not just um, physical sculpture or stuff. Of course, there's also like, when you talk about design, it's uh, user experience, interaction, and things like that. The latest iPhone with their all brand new gestures, 
guess what? A lot of us are actually quite familiar with gestures because we actually worked on, uh, back in Nokia and Yola, phones with gestures. And um, again, so it's not limited to you know, Chinese copycats or um, that kind of blatant copying, but ideas and um, um, usage and things like that can also be influenced and um, inspired. So I think many of us know this, and I think we should. I, I really want to promote Creative Commons. I, of course, I think this may not be the best audience because I'm sure all of you know this, but uh, I like to share this. And uh, another reason is because CC is my initials, Carol Chen. But <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, really, I think because that's the way you can properly uh, give credit to what inspired you, what uh, motivated you, and then who the original source is or idea is. And then, of course, there's respect that if the person don't want any derivatives or non-commercial work, things like that. And, uh, you know, always makes it, make it a point to contact the original author because I think they, they would like it to, to have to, uh, the knowledge that uh, they did something that you appreciated and um, that you, know, you took it and maybe changed a little bit, improved on it, whatever. But, uh, or you can negotiate with the origi original author what, what they, you can do with it and things like that. So to wrap it up, OK, I know time's up, sorry. <laughs> um, so just something to consider, to keep in mind the differences in um, this, you know, people define openness differently from the previous, uh, just the previous slides. Uh, what is considered good design? Maybe it's not good or bad, but just what's more appropriate for different people, different audiences, and of course, localization. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yes. Uh, okay, so the question is, uh, when you design web pages, um, to look at different directions, but people are told that most people start from the top left. And that's true, most people start from the top left. And I, I would say maybe in this day and age, that's like probably true, but there's, again, there's still people who start from the top right because of the right to left text. So again, uh, first define your audience. I think for most of the things, whether it's a software, design, whatever, we need to know who our target users are, target audiences. And if your target audience does contain people who you know, have a different language or different uh, way of uh, viewing stuff, then maybe you can uh, talk to them and um, see, see if, if there's something you can do to make their, their experiences better. So thank you. And one, one, one last thing. we have. Even though I talk, didn't talk about my project, uh, we have some cute stickers for Manage IQ and Per Project at the Open Source Design booth. Thank you for having that. Yeah. So if you like these cute little animals, of course not designed by me, but some of my colleagues, please uh, go to the booth and take them. Thank you.